Welcome back to another video of Splash TV Newport County match preview, eliminatory score predictions and thoughts going into the game in the comments down below. We need to win this game. It's you know you have must win games in the season and this definitely is. The draw against Walsall is a good point if we can go and beat Newport on Saturday and make it 17 wins for the season and uh, we probably need around six more wins and it's looking doable in terms of even automatic promotion but it's looking like we will get the playoffs then. Um, things we need to do in this game, we need to be more creative. Um, you know, We had no creativity in that last game, no shots on target and that's been a recurring theme in this season. We have decent games um, where we get some wins and then we have a setback or a draw or even a defeat where we slide back into a territory of not creating, not taking any risk in the final third. I did feel like we played for a point against Walsall and that's all well and good if we can go and beat Newport on Saturday, a, a, a very decent side who aren't in the best of form. Like I said, at the mid-table, the 18th, they're not on the best of runs. The third, they've got 38 points, so 12 points away from relegation zone and they're around 20 points away from 7th. So there's no, um, th there's nothing really riding on their season apart from building for next season. So these sort of games, we've got to be winning if we want to be going up. So I would put it in the most win category. Um, we've had two defeats in 13. Since Barrow, that, that disappointing defeat, we've um, gained 10 points from a possible 12. Uh, since Manfield, that disappointing draw that we had in the last minute, um, you know, it, it, definitely a heartache of, of, of a draw. So we, we, we bounced back from that with 16 points from a possible 21, beating teams like Stevenage, Tranmere, drawing against Walsall, beating a very informed Gillingham. We've been building from the back, the clean sheets and the defensive performances have been, um, that they've been praised and, and rightly so, and it's something that's been evident but we've improved upon in recent seasons and this season throughout the season we've um we've become more organized defensively and we've been building points from the back but we're also relying on Andy Cook feeding off scraps and scoring a goal here and there but really not getting anything clear cut so I think if you can get a good balance of getting clean sheets and defending well but also being on the front foot and creating that's what we need to find. We've had the most away clean sheets in seven years with eight and the season's still to uh, the, well, there's still plenty of games still to be played. Um, Twelve games left, and you know we've got a heavy chunk away, and we are good away. So hopefully we can gain some more po points there. We've kept four consecutive clean sheets for the first time since 2016 um, March April time, where we got I think four consecutive one nil uh, wins um, under Phil Parkinson in these last season. So hopefully we can make that five consecutive clean sheets. Um, and extend that one. We've had one defeat in 11. Darren Drysdale, as well as the snow, can prevent this from happening for us. Um, obviously the dreaded referee to be given in League 2 football, League 1 football. For 20 games against City, won. we've won 8 when he's refereed, drawn 3 and lost 9. He sent 2 of our players off in those 20 and only booked 27, compared to the opposition where he's booked 36 players and um, sent 2 players off as well. But Really, he is a terrible referee and normally a bad decision. Um, and, and, and he loses his head quite easily as well. And moving into the re results then, um, a 0 0 draw to Walsall, 2 0 win against Colchester, a 2 0 win against Gillingham, a 1 0 win against Doncaster, and a 1 0 defeat to Barrow. Their uh, last five results 1 1 draw to Grimsby, a 3 1 defeat to Salford, a 2 0 defeat to Sutton, a 1 0 win against Hartlepool, and a 1 1 draw. Against Walsall, their key players, Omar Bogle, um, he's got nine goals this season. Um, he's also he's always a player to keep your eye on. Fark Harrison um, scored in midweek against Grimsby in that 1-1 draw. He's got three goals and four assists this season as well. And any Newport fans tell me who you think your key players are because obviously I haven't watched Newport once this season apart from when they played Bradford in the reverse fixture onto the head to heads then and that reverse fixture. Um, our last five results we lost 2 0 in um, 13th of August 2022. We drew 0 0 26th of March 2022, one of Mark Hughes' first games in his first month. 0 0 draw on the 9th of October 2021, a 2 1 win on the 9th of March 2021, and a 3 0 win on the 24th of October 2020. Um, so we, what, what, what we've figured out there is we've played them a lot on March and October um, and we have also just lost one in our last six games against them so a pretty decent record, we've played 47, won 18, drawn 8 and lost 21 so a decent record against Newport 
and we've got to be winning this game if we want to have any real chance of going up because like I say we could move into the top three places against um, ahead of Stevenage with, with a win because we are only two points away from them and three points away from Carlisle and we've got to bridge that gap from eighth and us because it is currently three points between us and Wal uh, Mansfield and we need to extend uh, extend that so hopefully we can on Saturday. Um, my 11, now it's, it's interesting because my 11 will not be Mark Hughes' 11 and I'll probably stop doing videos on this channel if he gets this 11 bang on because he won't. Um, he'll probably stick with the diamond and I'm not even though I like the diamond and its defensive solidarity that it gives us and how organised we are defensively when we play it um, we've got to be more on the front foot and we've got to be more creative and we've got to be more less predictable when they get the ball so I'd go 4 2 3 one, and everyone's acting like the 4 2 3 one's this um, formation that's worked so well for us it hasn't in previous season it hasn't this season when we've used it but I think we've got to change it up because the, the dime's too predictable and it it's given us nothing going forward they ain't a balance to it um, so I'd go Lewis in goal obviously Lewis in goal fantastic keeper made some very good saves against Walsall and um, just continuously the, be the best goalkeeper in this division by a long mile. Halliday on in right back, um, it's good defensively. Going forward he needs to improve but I think with a, um, a, a winger down, down the side it will help him going forward. Platt, um, I thought he had a good game against um, Walsall, I know a lot didn't um, but I don't know why. I think most of it is they want Stubbs and Critchlow to play with each other but you know, um, I'm pretty sure Stubbs is our player now anyway, and hopefully he's because he's a fantastic player. Um, but if if they both are, then you know we don't need to force in a lone player because he's done well when Platt and Stubbs have done no wrong and they're forming a very good, solid partnership. Stubbs he's brought some much needed leadership and um, he's very vocal as well, and I think he's helped Platt get through games where if he makes a mistake he's constantly talking to him so he's been a massive improvement on our defence and the main reason for me why we're getting clean sheets right out um, defensively solid going forward needs to improve but again with a winger down the um, you know helping him go, going forward that that will probably help him um, Clayton and Gilead in midfield now you could say Clayton probably needs to be dropped in terms of giving him a rest playing Saturday Tuesday is he 34 that's not going to be good for him. So if if I would, I'd probably play Smallwood and East with each other. I wouldn't play um, Gilead if Clayton in playing because I think you need to you need a balance. And I think Smallwood and East um, give a better balance to Smallwood and Gilead, and it hasn't worked this season. Um, but yeah, I'd go Clayton because that that um, diamond of a uh, not diamond that triangle trio of Platt, Stubbs, and Clayton is working really well, and that they have a mix of experience, leadership, and um, a bit, just uh, they have an understanding of what each one needs them to do. Gilead next to Clayton because I think he gives a good energy um, and he's a good ball carrier. And then the, the the three behind Andy Cook. This is where you know all that. Well, yeah, Hughes might go with that, but then the, these three, Hughes won't go with these three. Um, Banks, Pereira, and Chapman. Um, Banks, I think when he's come off the bench, he's looked promising, bright, and probably one of our better um, one of our players who looks like he's actually going to cause some damage to the opposition Pereira in the number 10 position because I, th I think Walker needs a rest last few games he's been playing he either looks injured or he just needs a rest because he's been in and out the team for most of the season because of injury or flu I think he had that around Christmas came back in the team got sent off and then he's been playing Saturday Tuesday ever since I think he needs some time away because his performances have dipped as well and Pereira, maybe it's a bit of nostalgia with Pereira from last season, but I would like to see him get another chance in the team. Obviously, he played a lot of the first half of the season, and he didn't get it. He, he just constantly kept picking him to play himself into form, and he never did. And then since then, since he's been out of the team, he's never come back in. So I think he's had that kick up the backside they needs. And hopefully he can come back in the team. And I think he's the type of player we need, someone who can open doors, someone who can. Um, have a bit of flair to go around players and uh, you know be, be be a creative player that we need. So I'd, I'd put Pereira back in. Chapman, I think again when he came on against Colchester, he looked again a bright spark, someone who changed the game for us. And I think he's much better on the out on the wide because he don't need that in product that you require as a number ten. Um, so I think that suits him more. And Andy Cook up top because you are not dropping Andy Cook simply when he's in this form and when Andy Cook don't score, Bradford City don't win. 
that's something we've seen recently. Um, so hopefully those three can create him the chances uh, to put the ball in the back of the net, which we need to start doing more guys. Like I said on Tuesday, we're going to fall into the territory of drawing too many games. Uh, so score prediction, I'm going to go 2-0, Cook and well it depends if that team's playing. I'd, I'd go Cook and Banks if, if that team's playing. So let me know your team in the comments down below, let me know your thoughts going into a game in the comments down below, let me know if you think he's going to be called off. Newport fans, let me know your key players because I, I don't know a lot about Newport. And uh, past and presence as well, the only one I've come up with is Michael Flynn um, because I, I just can't remember any others. And let me know your score predictions as well. Um, subscribe if you're new, like the video if you liked it, but most importantly, comment your thoughts in the comments down below. Have a good one.